Hello again, it's Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida. And that's a 12 inch by 24 inch canvas. And I'm going to be using Color Art products today. Prism Pores. Wait. <laughs> Prism Pores. Although that one's got a cling wrap label over it. Uh, that's Sour Lemon. This is Sea Dancer. This is an amazing color. Maybe I have that here somewhere. Yeah, that's what it looks like mixed up. Of course, I'm heavy handed when it comes to adding those powders. But um, I love mixing this stuff up. I have a ball. So I want to do another seascape. And I want to use a mixture of my prism pores and my primary elements. And they're willy-nilly mixed also with Vivid Polypore and Vivid Enamel. This is a sour lemon with some orange crush in it. And I've been asked by a local fan to try and do a yellow sky or a yellow and orange sky. So this is my start. I think I better grab a scrape dish. And I'm going to try and do the bottom half with um, cell activator and create some cells for some texture. It might be very surreal. This is Tuscan Sun. I don't usually use the bottles that they came in, but um, I was it was it was at the appropri appropriate level for me to mix in the Vivid Polypore and the Josonia varnish. The paint pouring recipe is underneath the video. I have an early mix that I made when bottles were always all small, and that is Tuscan Sun and Chantilly Lace. Assuming it will come out. I think it will help extend the yellow sky. And I'm happy to use it up because I have other beautiful colors now. I have to be a little careful about how much more I go because I want to have all my colors in there. I don't know if I use the sour lemon yet. I, this is shiny taffeta. I love this color. When I was younger, this was I had a great outfit in this this lovely, lovely lemon yellow, pale, pale lemon yellow, chiffon, taffeta, shiny. <laughs> All right, that's got to be enough. I wanted to put some French silk in here, and also the French silk is a prison pour, and the um, the mother of pearl. Is a new, I think it's an ancient metal, so I'm not sure. But the mother of pearl is also a prison pour. And I'm going to go a little easy on that. Because I'm just going to be mixing with my spatula right on the canvas. And this ought to be really interesting. Because I've put my other colors over here that I want to use in my land portion over there. Uh, I forgot to use the mother of pearl that I had left over. Darn. All right, so instead of anything else, I'm just going to pick up some color right now and put it on the edge of the canvas. That way I don't have to think about it again. And if I do that across the top, then I can also use that color across the top by back pushing it off my spatula. Excuse me, my nose, I'm, I've been mixing paint, so who knows what makes my nose run, but something does. <laughs> Could just be Florida in general. So I'm just taking my spare paint and using it where I want coverage. And that happens to be the top and the edges for right now. I don't mind if a little bit goes of one side or the other because as long as the paint is nice and liquidous and it's early days it'll mix fairly beautifully. I should say very beautifully. Got to be careful in the center of the 12 inch by 24 inch canvases because if you press too hard you discover there's a stretcher bar in there. Now I do use GAC 800 by Golden, which means if my paint colors are heavy, I can leave them that way without them cracking from being heavy. I'm going to turn this around the other way. 
give myself the opportunity. Maybe move a couple bottles out of the way. Maybe knock some more paint off on the edge. I think I'm going to go right down into the bottom. I know there's a rule of thirds for people who are trained, so it would be nice if I were going to come up with that. I see there's a couple things in there that I don't want in there. And I haven't done any other painting today, so I can't blame the, blame the paint chips. I do love that orange color. But I am dripping right over the edge. Okay. I'm going to snag that color. Bring it back. Whatever goes on below the halfway point is probably going to be thoroughly mixed up with my endeavor to put cells on the bottom half, which is basically just a textural idea I have. I just did a seascape with just the spatula and I so wanted to add another layer, but it turned out to be so appreciated by so many people that I'm afraid I would offend someone if I messed with it too much. That looks like something that needs to come out of there. Or a bubble. No, it's something that needs to come out. So I'm liking most of that. I'm trying to get across the middle without leaving an indentation. I don't mind taking any of that beautiful yellow color, yellow-orange color, and dragging it across. I keep finding new things in there, though. I don't want to do that. I want to get on with the bottom. When I find bubbles, I will pierce them. So no pressure in the center at all if I can help it. I saw that. I wish my nose would stop running now. I had a little cold recently. It, it was on and off for about 10 days. I should really learn to allow some of the anomalous marks in the sky to stay because clouds are often nothing straight forward. All right, I'm almost there. I promise I'm almost there. I will have to, I will have to use the sharp end of a skewer Here's some things. I do love that sky though. I really, really do. And I almost got it to the point where I don't feel like there's going to be so many bubbles in there that I have to worry about it. I do see. If you catch, if you can pull these things out with a nice sharp pair of stainless steel tweezers on my Amazon link, uh, under the link tree, under show more, under the video, <laughs> you can, if you do it early enough, you won't leave a mark because the paint will fill back in. Kind of same with the bubbles, but I'm not really there. I'm not totally available to that yet. Let's try one more time. Oh boy, I'm nervous. And I keep spotting more of these little lumps. And I want them to be gone. Okay, it's time. It's go time. I think. <laughs> I think that looks pretty pretty darn good. So I'm going to start with the colors that are not not my primary, and this is Moody Lilac. It's a prism pour. You know what? I forgot something I was going to do, and that is to spread a layer of Meaden white paint. And I think very quickly. I'm going to try and use the paint up on my spatula, scrape off the residual, because I might want that later, assuming I can still use it. And it's time to get a fresh spatula right now. These are OXO omelet turning flip and fold spatulas. They're the best paint spreading tool I know of. They also carry a nice blade of paint, so if you're swiping like I am, you can place it up next to the edge that you want to use it on. Press it in and it will fill in beautifully. So your finger will do the same thing. 
<laughs> that was, I believe, Meaden White. I think the previous time I did this, I might have used up some Amsterdam. I don't think it matters that much. My paint pouring recipe for base layers is a little different than anything I use for the prism pours or the primary elements. And you can ask me for the recipe, but I'll tell you it's my pouring medium starts with three quarters Floetrol American and one quarter GAC 800 from Golden. And then I usually double the mixture with paint. I need a wet layer, I've decided. A wet base layer without things in it, please. And it does need to have a little bit of volume to it. It can't just be drying instantly and work perfectly well. I am going to scrape that off. If I can see the canvas, it's not thick enough. The bottom I'm not as concerned about. I can always do something about that later, she says, as she worries about it endlessly right in front of the camera. <laughs> okay then. All right, I'm going to throw that in the bucket too, because I'm going to use a paddle and maybe another spatula to swipe with, and I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Moody Lilac first. If at all. And then I'm going to move on to the colors that I love the most. This one recently is Sea Dancer. It's awesome. And uh, it's a primary element. Excuse me. Yes, it is. I got it right this time. Now, I don't know if I said, I'll have to remember, but I want this to be kind of surreal. Surreal. I have some two primary elements mixed together, boysenberry and ginger flower. I think I'm going to use a little bit of passion, but I'm going to also throw a little bit of fire and ice in there, which is another prison pour. I might want to take some of the Baltic Amber I just made a large container of. This one's mixed with Vivid Polypore. What a fabulous color. My Amsterdam White and Amsterdam Black mixed with Aussie Floetrol are coming right up. I have a couple of greens. This green I made out of 97% winter green, wait, 90% winter green, 7% royal sapphire, and 3% midnight shadow. I'm kind of feeling like I should have put a little bit of green in there. I know I used a little bit of orange the other day. I'm a little nervous about not having enough coverage. This is dark water. And I am being called the orange, and I'm going to throw a little pink in there too. The pink is passion. I know it seems odd, but I think it'll go really well with the sky anyway. And like I said, I was going to throw a different color orange in here, but it occurs to me if I use the same colors in the sky, and it shows up, it'll look like reflections. Am I missing anything? I, I think I'm going to give myself permission to have just a little bit of my favorite mixture, which is Orange Crush, with a little bit of Big Apple. Those are both prison pores. Okay, the moment of truth has arrived. I'm going to get a few bottles out of my way. 
I didn't put any of the Midnight Shadow in there, and I might want to do that now. Just because the only thing that I'm relying on to give myself any shadows is the black, Amsterdam black, and the cell activator. So let's do that. I may regret not using any pale green. I have some pale green. Oh, look at that. Let's do it. This is Tuscan Sun, Fandango, and Wintergreen. Oh, I even like those right like they are. That color combination is kind of cute. I like it. All right, let's see if I can remember how I put my paint on. I've got just enough time left. Three minutes. This is a really big paint paddle and I kind of want to use my smaller one, but I guess I can always do it afterwards. Let's make sure that's dry. And I'm going to start this way. I'm hoping that I didn't make a mistake because it's <laughs> the white comes before the black, I think. So I, I could have made a mistake. Um, let's fix it. <laughs> we got a target now. All right, so where to start, where to start? always wanted to do this. I think I'm going to take a Princeton Arto Catalyst spatula available on my Amazon link along with my two books because they can and unlimited possibilities. Oh, and Leslie wants me to remind you guys, don't forget there's a 20% off color art coupon code underneath the video for all things color art. I might want to grab that smaller spatula. Excuse me, that smaller palette knife right after I get all the color off of here. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure about the smaller palette knife, but I'm definitely certain that if I use one of my little acetate tools, that could be cool. I might want to put some trees in this. And I have some PBO iridescent gold. I hope we get out of here in time for me to shimmer this at you. Which is also mixed with Australian flow troll. And I'm going to have to tip this a little bit to get the paint to go down over the edge. But that might be kind of cool. Because I don't know if I've ever done exactly that. I might want to put some trees in here, <laughs> honestly. Let's go up the wrong way first. See if anything moves up that way. So you get some really strange shapes. Maybe I'll use a straw. I've got like one minute left to tell you guys. Don't forget about the coupon and definitely check out my link tree for Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter links, Facebook groups, Expressionist Art Studio Gallery, Appreciation Group. I'm pretty sure if I hold this up long enough I can get some of that paint to go down over that edge which is what I need to do but in the meantime I'm going to try and shimmer this at you without this, whoop, sorry about that, without this other light on. I'm getting a lot of really pretty cells. I'm not sure this is going to look exactly like this, and I'm definitely thinking about trees. Maybe even balloon trees. Let's go all the way down in there. Pretty cells. I want to just keep going. <laughs> what are you going to do? 
I want to keep playing with my palette knife in the areas that don't have any 